Hi, I'm Clovis Casali in Paris, and it's time for Culture on France 24. Today on our show, Encore, we have the pleasure of welcoming the man one could arguably call the boss of the Cannes Film Festival. Thierry Frémo is the director of the world's biggest movie event, as well as an author. And his latest book notably explores another of his passions, judo. But as always, cinema is never far. Thierry Frémo, welcome to Encore. Bonjour. So the lineup for the summer for this summer's Cannes Film Festival has just been unveiled. Many big names. We've got Wes Anderson, Sean Penn for the US, former winners of the Palme d'Or, Nani Moretti, Jacques Audiard, legendary. Um, tell me a bit more about this selection and tell our viewers around the world what we should look out for. I know you're the director. You can't express any preference, but what should we be looking at? Should we be looking out for? Well, we, we, we should look at cinema, uh, for sure. I, I can't take one film on another uh, because, uh, because first, first of all, I, I love them all. But also because uh, what we feel, and especially in France since two weeks, where the return to the theatres has been a triumph, it's almost the same. What we felt when we, we revealed the, 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 the lineup was the passion of Cannes the comeback of the passion of Cannes. Not that I thought it was forgotten, but it's really something that we, that, that, that we, we want to have, being in Cannes, watching films. We missed uh, that so much, uh, being there all together, uh, sharing emotions, uh, which is Cannes, but which is also cinema. Before we talk more, let's take a look at a clip from some of the films competing this summer. Man has changed me. What I see in her is obvious. He assembled a team of the best expatriate journalists of his time. Berenson, Sazerac, Kremens, Roebuck Wright. These were his people. Just try to make it sound like you wrote it that way on purpose. Peut-être a-t-il mis Benedetta en trance? Ou bien Dieu nous a envoyé une folle qui débite des sottises pour servir ses dessins. Thierry Frémo, last year's edition was, of course, cancelled because of the COVID-19 pandemic. It hasn't disappeared. There are still travel restrictions in many, many countries around the world. So what should we expect this year? How different will the festival be? And which stars can we expect on the red carpet? Well, first of all, we, we, we are still working on what will be the conditions of uh, uh, normal can. Uh, first of all, in France, uh, in one month, in the 30th of June, we will have uh, back 100% of seats, which was very important for us. So we'll have, of course, a screening with mask, screening with, with a lot of precaution. The pandemic is not dead, it's not over, so we need to be very careful. But also we, we want to have a can um, uh, uh, in, in great condition, welcoming a lot of people abroad, and, uh, and except some country which are in the red list, um, I think, and we are waiting for some new information next week, but I think that, that uh, things will be better. What, what is good is that in the past fall, we have decided to, to keep uh, several possibilities uh, after May, which was beginning of summer, end of summer, or autumn. We, 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 we picked up beginning of summer, and we have the, 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 the things we know about uh, what will happen in one month are much sure than what will be what will happen in October. So, so now we are quite confident to have a, a can with restriction, with a lot of precaution, uh, with dinner better than a cocktail, which is <laughs> better for me. I prefer <laughs> dinners. Uh, and uh, uh, but no, and and on the red carpet, uh, all the cast, wonderful cast of Wes Anderson with Bill Murray, with Lea Sedu, with Benicio del Toro, or the cast of the opening opening night film uh, with Marion Cotillard and Adam Driver. It, it's not bad this selection. It's not a selection of a post-COVID mm. festival. Only a few weeks ago, and we don't yet know exactly who's going to be in the jury. Is it confirmed that Spike Lee? legendary, iconic filmmaker, Brooklyn's finest, will be the president of the jury? Yes, and it's not only to say Spike Lee will be the president, but Spike Lee waited for us. Mm. Spike Lee, since more than one year, uh, said, whatever will happen, I manage my own schedule to be there with you. 
and uh, he was That's so faithful. It was important. First, because uh, being so so faithful to the festival, not only him, a lot of people, uh, it was very touching for us. And uh, and of course, Spike uh, is a great filmmaker. That's why he deserves to be president of the jury. But he's also the first uh, black man, black director, to be president not only of Cannes of a great festival, and which is also. Uh, something very important to us, and is is first is so so open, nice, and funny. That's why we we are sure that uh, it will be a pleasant moment with him. But well, let's also we have some pleasant. conviction. Let's talk about pleasant moments because people always ask you what was the best moment for you in Cannes. What was the most memorable encounter? I'd like to ask you what was the worst encounter. What was the most disappointing, possibly meeting? With a star, with an actor, with a director. The worst moment, uh, one or two times every year, is when you love a film so much and the film is destroyed, when the film is not loved. Uh, so it's not only that maybe, you, maybe it was a mistake to, to pick it up, but also it was, um, it was a mistake to bring somebody to Cannes to, to experience such a, such a bad moment. So you feel guilty for, for that. You were talking about friends or artistic friendships. And uh, there's one uh, person, it's Quentin Tarantino. You talk about him. There's a chapter about him in your uh, book uh, called Judoka. You uh, explain, you, you tell this story of when you went to L.A., saw an unfinished uh, director's cut of uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And uh, you uh, say that uh, Quentin Tarantino definitely stands in the great pantheon of filmmakers, and even that he is the uh, youngest person there. What makes him so different than other filmmakers of his generation, or maybe even younger, gen uh, younger filmmakers? Well, uh, of course, there is first his talent. Uh, he, he, the path we have now from Tarantino's work uh, is forever. He is at the pantheon of of uh, history of cinema, but he's more than that because he, he, he is a movie buff. We, we have some, uh, like Maurice Scorsese, or like uh, my dear Bertrand Tavernier, uh, who are filmmakers and movie buff and cinephile. And Quentin has a very specific passion of cinema, very specific passion of 35 celluloid, mm. uh, uh, old-fashioned kind of making films and of screening film. He has his own theater, the New Beverly in Los Angeles, and which reopened two days ago. And, uh, and uh, he screened there only 35 millimeter print. And it's not an act of passeism. It's not an act of the past. It's really something like when we, we see the vinyl success, uh, the return of the vinyl. And um, we have read also a lot of things about that cinema was maybe something from the past. Uh, last year, we didn't, we couldn't celebrate the 125 years of mm. the birth of cinema. Uh, let's see, not you, not me, mm. uh, if we will, if they will celebrate the 125 years of the birth of the platform. Mm. Just quickly, uh, touching upon what you were just saying, Amazon has just bought MGM. You've got Netflix all these major players, you were talking about the cinema traditions, those uh, silver screens. What is your take? Will these uh, new uh, major actors still promote independent cinema? Are you not worried that uh, they will only be going for uh, blockbusters? Well, it's, it's a long story, and now we, we, can, we can know what was the origin of maybe the, of the situation we, we, we have now. Uh, first of all, you're right. Uh, the, the big studios in, in, in the US uh, started like 20 years ago to do only films for kids. So the adult cinema, what was the legendary, the legend of Hollywood uh, in the 70s, for example, what they called the new Hollywood, uh, is almost over. But it's not over because it comes from the independent cinema. So you have two big families the family of the big blockbuster and the family of independent cinema. Nomad's Land, which will come out every, everywhere uh, and got the Academy Award for Best Picture and Best Director this year, um, is part of this still alive, uh, strong, independent movement of cinema. And I think that uh, this is not dead, but uh, for sure, the platforms 
Amazon, Netflix, Apple, mm. where they where they go finding the filmmaker in the world of cinema. Mm. So if they want to have more uh, directors in the future, we need to preserve what cinema is. And cinema is a kind of creation of a wonderful artistic democracy. It's not, uh, it's not a studio or a platform who decide to do some films. It's the films, like us in the selection. We don't know when we start, what will be the selection. And I used to say, I'm not selecting the film. The film are selected by me. The film are saying to me, hey, we're here, we exist. And uh, that's why I think we can be confident of the talent of the creator. A message of optimism. Fascinating talking to you, Thierry Frémont. Thank you very much. Your book called Judoka is out now. And of course, the Cannes Film Festival from July 6th until the 17th in the south of France. Thank you very much. And we're going to leave our viewers with images from uh, the Cinémathèque uh, de Paris, Cine Cinémathèque Française, with an event taking place. One of your great fr friends, Bertrand Tavernier, picked a selection of films being played there. Bertrand Tavernier, who passed away this year. That's it for today for Encore. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to France 24 for always more international news. France 24, your economy explained. Liberté, égalité, actualité.